Good morning and welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. We are very pleased to be joined by Lance Allred. He is a local here. Nice to have you with us. And he is the first step player in the NBA. And he was called up to work with the Cleveland Cavaliers back in 2008. And uh, since then, you've been up to a lot of great things. You just retired a couple months ago. And now you are doing motivational speaking, getting around, talking with kids and people, and uh, inspiring people with, with your story. Welcome to Thank the show. Thank you for having me. How are you today? I'm great. It's great to be here. Excellent. I am so pleased. It was so funny because uh, we have someone else coming on the show, and I thought that he may have been I, I for a moment I thought you were my other guest I was like nope he has about like a couple feet on the other person so you're probably the basketball player and probably a lot there. better looking too <laughs> yeah there you go so nice to have a Lance with us and it's uh, thrilling because this is something where you have really taken to heart with your experiences you come from a, a very vast range of experiences in your background sure born in a polygamous commune with 80% hearing loss due to RH complications like I said uh, and then with the NBA after that and uh, various other adventures and such but now you're here you know helping people out inspiring them and uh, let's first talk a little bit more about your background and kind of how that shaped you as you move forward and where you are now in mm. terms of trying to motivate people yeah well you know when you grow up in a polygamous commune um, right away People are trying to pigeonhole you to right. behave in a certain way. And um, I was born here with my hearing loss due to the RH factor mm -hmm. uh, because I was born in my grandmother's bedroom. We didn't use conventional hospitals. And because of that, I would suffer with the RH factor. My mother was a negative, I was a, my father was a positive. And so basically her body recognized me as a parasite and almost killed me off. And so they had to eventually take me down to the hospital and I had to have several blood changes. And so we're not sure if the nerves in my ears were never fully developed or if they were damaged during the changes, blood changes. We're, we're not sure. But the doctor did warn my parents that hearing issue might arise and it did. And they discovered that I'm about 80% hearing loss. And the problem is growing up in rural Montana, there were no sign language classes or anything at my disposal. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn speech therapy right away, twice a week till I was 15 years old. And I learned to read lips and Midwest, Mountain West dialect. You know, you throw <laughs> me in the South or back East and people talk with the vowel shifts. I'm like, I don't know what's going oh, on that's here. That's crazy. That's so interesting to hear that from your perspective. I've heard that, but someone with, with what you're dealing with, it's mm -hmm. completely different. Ball game, yeah, like sure. every, every English dialect is a language unto itself for me. What's really. the hardest? Oh, uh, or the most strange the, to you? The jive, the southern ones. The jive. Like, through <laughs> yeah. through my year with my all the years with my teammates, but they've been great teammates. But they learned really quickly that oh, Lance is hearing impaired, and so they've mm -hmm. learned to speak more Hollywood movie mm. accent. And mm -hmm. everyone knows how to accent. Right. And so that was a challenge um, with the speech therapy. Um, Luckily, my parents forced me to go. I'm glad now because it allows me to be successful in the mainstream world. Sure. And you know. The tough part about growing up in a polygamous commune is my Sunday school teacher at the age of five told me that God had made me deaf as a form of punishment for being unfaithful in the pre-existence. And how, how old were you? I was five. You were five. <laughs> and wow. so you absorb all this stuff. And so I had to, I felt like I had to atone for some previous sin that I had no recollection of. Uh -huh. And I all, also have a chip on my shoulder that I have to work that much harder to uh -huh. be normal, but also to be loved by God. Uh -huh. And so in a way, it makes you, yeah, develop OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, which I did, but also it made me work that much harder when I started playing basketball when my family broke away from the polygamous group when I was 14. I grew from 5'10 to 6'4 that year. And in we moved one to, year? Yeah, it was eighth grade. And so we're here in a new part of town, Salt Lake, and I have no friends and I'm like, I'm just a big kid walking around the school and the basketball coach sees me. He says, you can play basketball. I'm like, sure, I'll play. It's a great way to make friends and I don't right, have to right. communicate with people, but little did I know, team sports requires extreme amounts of communication. Uh -huh. And so, but that drive to overcompensate is what kept pushing me, motivating me to get better and get better. And, you know, that's part of the, the challenge I've had and that people have been telling me all my life what I can and can't do. And mm -hmm. I joke that I, I simply choose not to listen because I can't hear them anyway. <laughs> that is a pretty great, uh, everyone could live by a little bit more of that motto for yeah. sure. But that's incredible because you hear stories of people dealing with uh, those trials or, or problems or just, it just seems like it, the, the deck stacked against them or something, but you can choose to go that one of two ways. Either you let it just, you know, mm -hmm. quash you like, yeah. you know, the world, 
you know, the world doesn't care. No. You feel like it doesn't. Or you can choose to just take it upon yourself to be like, I'm not going to deal with that. I'm going to take it a different way and, and be better because of it. Absolutely. Um, that, that was one of the main things, too, a driving force for me through basketball. Like, you know what? No one's ever done this. No one's been the first legally deaf player to ever play in the NBA. I'm going to do it. Right. And so people ask me, who was your role model? I'm like, I didn't really have any. It was mm. me. And I wanted to kind of blaze a trail to let others, whether it's basketball or anything else, to let them know the only limitations that really exist are the ones we place on ourselves. And another thing that people should know is that the initial, if you want to call it a disability, the hearing loss, isn't the biggest challenge. It's actually the, uh, the side effects, like the mm -hmm. obsessive compulsive disorder through religious dogma and the other and the self-esteem issues that you, that arise. I think those are the bigger challenges than the actual disability itself. Because once you get those things under control, you kind of get to be more comfortable with yourself. Right. And, you, and it's, it's a good lifestyle. I mean, I can take my hearing is out when I want and go to sleep. No one, bo no one bothers me. And <laughs> it's, I mean, uh, people ask me, oh, would you try to get cold clear? And no, I actually being able, I like being able to compartmentalize my life a little bit like that. Interesting. It's, it's not That's a, fascinating. It's pretty convenient. Lance, let's talk for a moment about uh, your experience uh, in the MBA. Maybe you can share an experience or two of uh, really what kind of helped form you during that time with those guys, with the Cleveland Club Cavaliers. Oh. I'll, I'll give you two things. So okay. when I got called up from the NBA Development League, I was clear, to the Cleveland Cavaliers. I show up the first day, and LeBron is there in the locker room with me. He sees my ratty old shoes that I brought with me. He's uh -huh. like, no, 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 I'll give you some shoes. So he gave me a pair right. of his shoes. And so I'm like, oh, thanks. I mean, I didn't think they'd be that nice. So they're actually, people don't realize, they're, I thought it would be more standoffish, but once you get there, most people are really just open. They're like, hey, you earned it, good job, you got wow. here, you did it the hard way, you came through the minor leagues, and so I have a lot of respect for you. But another thing is, the thing to be honest about, is I remember standing there on the court about two weeks after I'd been called up, 16,000 people, and they're all cheering and everything. I remember standing there and I'm thinking, is this it? Hmm. It's just the best that it gets. Because, you know, reality can never live up to our fantasies and expectations. Right. Because the thing is, I have been so driven to prove people wrong and to earn God's love mm -hmm. that when I got there, I thought I'd be fulfilled. I was chasing this external validation, and that's never going to happen. That's, mm -hmm. that's a pipe dream. No one can ever do that. Because I think we all suffer from that because we have all these Hollywood romances, kiss in the rain, they get married, happily ever after, end roll Fairy credits. tales have totally screwed us all up. Yeah. Let's be honest. Is like, that, <laughs> and, I think so. And sure, it's intense, immediate satisfaction when I was called up, uh -huh. but was I still comfortable and at peace with myself? No. And so there was a lot of disenchantment with it too. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think people need to realize is that chasing event horizon to event horizon isn't going to make you happy. It's keeping your beat. It's who you are through the highs and the lows. That's your character through it all. And that's something I really learned post MBA as I've been traveling the world now, every continent in the world, uh, playing basketball for the last six years following that experience. Right. And I would say the real thing that really gave me the validation mm -hmm. or helped me find peace was when my, my son was finally born. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, if I, if I can love him this much, then why can't I love the little boy, the five-year-old that was told that God didn't love him, that he had to atone. So using, now that I have perspective and a reference with my son, I'm able to go back and be more comfortable with myself, the aspects of myself that I tried to hide or to, to put away and try to be somebody else. And we've all done it. Everyone's told us to be like something else or appear made you feel, feel, feel embarrassed in school and you feel like, right. oh, I don't want to be that person anymore. Mm -hmm. And so that's a lot of the stuff that I talk about with my motivational speaking, um, helping people really find our own true self-worth without using external validation with it. And that's why with this basketball camp coming up with these kids with uh, hearing impairment, it's, it's very rewarding to do that. That's phenomenal. And, and as you've been talking about some of the, the topics that you discuss, my first thought was, I mean, you're speaking of this as, as an adult, you know, you're in your 20s and uh, something, or, and now you're 34, right? Yeah. And so, but, you know, as you dealt with these things, mm, yeah. you know, you were an, an adult essentially, but, yes. and that's what's interesting is that 
at every age you deal with these things. I mean, now yeah. you're in your mid-30s, but you're going to be working with kids. And it's mm -hmm. fascinating how those same concepts, they're really universal. They really are. And it's, it, it's not age-specific. It really isn't. You de we deal with these things mm -hmm. our entire life that, you know, uh, it, it sounds like, you know, that, that self-validation. Mm -hmm. You want that as a as a five-year-old, as a so ten-year-old, as a thirty-five-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. And now you're being able to help these kids kind of yeah. learn that uh, in many ways through uh, this camp that yeah. you're doing. Uh, tell me about it and where we can go. Yeah. So uh, June 22nd at the Sanderson Deaf Community Center in Taylorsville, okay. uh, I'm running a four-day camp with uh, kids in the morning, uh, about. 10 to 14 years of, of age, about 9 to 11 in the morning, and then from 12 to 3, I work with the teenagers. Uh, hearing impaired, deaf, full deaf, some of them aren't even, they know sign language or they're a brother or a cousin that goes right. with their friends. I welcome all kids to come just because I'm trying to bridge a gap because there is a disconnect sometimes. B both communities can be a little hard to get together mm -hmm. um, and they kind of put walls up. So I'm trying to break those walls and get people more interactive and mingled. And it's great that kids start learning a little bit of sign language and mm -hmm. kids who rely solely on sign language start to try to speak or because they're self-conscious. I was self-conscious. I wish I had a video here to show you. When I was 12, 13, you still could barely understand me. Mm. And the kids would make fun of me all the time. Mm. And so I know how scary it is to put yourself out there. But I'm trying to get these kids to just, you know what? Put yourself out there. Expand your boundaries. Grow. Because that's the only way you're going to grow. If you try to stay inside your little box and keep yourself from being hurt, you're never going to experience life at all. Mm. And so I work with them on team, goal setting, leadership and perseverance and those are the aspects that I really try to push home with them and last year with my first year being it I felt it was a great accomplishment and we're going to keep building on it and hopefully just make it an annual thing. Fantastic. So how can we get in involved? I know we have your website uh, LanceAllred41.com and L Squared Productions but mm -hmm. in terms of a registering how do we go about doing that? Yeah I'm actually trying to get on top of that with them. Mm -hmm. um, I know you can just find their, their Sanderson Deaf Community Center online mm -hmm. and call them but I'm trying to see uh, get that flyer or promotional thing put out. We're a few weeks ahead of it already, but um, it should be on my website pretty soon. I have a Excellent. link to that, but uh, if so nothing it, else, just call them. Very good. And so it's June 22nd through the 26th uh, mm -hmm. is when that camp is, and if you want to find out more information about Lance, like we said, LanceAllRed41.com. Thank you, sir, so much Thanks for, for being me. here. So inspiring what you have to share, and excited to see where you go with all of this next. So thank you. Thank you. Very much. Well, after this commercial break, we'll be right back here in studio with Rob Harder from the Christian Center. Don't go away.